Hello everyone, I'm Jason Mays, Developer Advocate for TensorFlow.js here at Google. And today we'll be talking about what's new in TensorFlow.js for 2021. But first, what is TensorFlow.js and how are people using it today? Well, TensorFlow.js is a library for machine learning in JavaScript that can run in the browser on the client side. This enables lower latency inference, high privacy, and lower serving costs for our users. We even support Node.js for server-side and, of course, IoT devices too. With TensorFlow.js, you can write once and use anywhere. Simply convert your machine learning model to run in JavaScript on device and unlock the reach and scale of the web, which can bring many benefits. For example, zero install. Use any of our demos in just one click of a link and reach an audience of billions instantly with no complex environment setup in a way people can share with ease. This can lead to some great visibility for your research or product. Here are the environments we currently support. We have client-side in the popular web browsers, server-side via Node, native mobile via React Native or progressive web apps, native desktop via Electron, and even Internet of Things, for example, on Raspberry Pi, which is possible via Node. And with TensorFlow.js, you can run, retrain via transfer learning, or write your own models completely from scratch, just like you might already be doing in Python, but in JavaScript. And since launch, we've released many pre-made models, and we're continually expanding our selection, which we'll hear more about shortly. We have models across many categories, such as vision, body, text, and sound, for you to use in just a few lines of code. You can check out tensorflow.org slash js slash models to see them all. Even better, you do not need a background in machine learning to use these, just a working knowledge of JavaScript is required. And by using our pre-made models or creating your own if you wish, it allows you to create pretty much anything you might dream up. So let's take a look at what people have been making. Here, InSpace used real-time toxicity filters in their web conferencing app. You can see that when a user types something bad, it's flagged before it's even sent to the server for processing and it alerts the user they might want to reconsider what they're about to send, creating a more pleasant conversational experience on the platform. We've also seen a number of external companies using TensorFlow.js in novel ways, such as Include Health, who we've collaborated with to refine our pose estimation models specifically for use cases within physiotherapy at scale. With many folk unable to leave their homes or travel remotely these days, this technology allows for a remote diagnosis from the comfort of their own home using off-the-shelf technology, such as a standard webcam, that many people have access to. You could even bring a character to life by combining multiple pre-made models. In this demo, we use pose estimation and face mesh detection running simultaneously. Now, traditionally, creating animation has been a hard problem, but this Pose Animator tool by Partner Innovation here at Google allows you to draw any SVG character you like and then use your body to control it in real time, giving animators a motion capture solution to drive 2D character animation that anyone can use with just a webcam. And yes, this is all running entirely in a web browser. Or how about turning your voice into a musical instrument using Magenta's Tone Transfer model? that runs entirely in the web browser too through TensorFlow.js. You can simply sing any song or tune that you wish and hear it being played by an instrument of your choice, allowing anyone the ability to now play an instrument with their voice and this generative model. Or what if we could make the world more accessible? Here, the partner innovation team at Google used TensorFlow.js to understand sign language gestures. This project is built using a combination of machine learning model outputs for face, hands, and body to account for the fact that sign language is communicated not only with the signer's hands, but also with their facial expression and overall body position and posture. Currently, the demo has been trained on JSL and HKSL phrases, but could scale to any sign language dialect. And even better, this library can be used for any sort of gesture recognition. Even beyond sign language, it's generalizable to any human-computer interaction use case, which opens up possibilities for web-based creative experiences, fitness, health, and even HCI research. So a lot of great demos there, but what's new for 2021 with TensorFlow.js itself? 
Well, first up, we're really pleased to announce that in just one year, we've seen three times the growth in our weekly usage, and we now have over 3.2 million total NPM downloads to date, which has led to over 50 million CDN hits and over 12,500 projects that depend on TensorFlow.js on GitHub alone. It's really exciting to see so many people taking their first steps of machine learning in JavaScript and seeing the community and ecosystem grow so fast. We also have a number of model updates for you. FaceMesh now has Iris support and more robust tracking of the face itself, as you can see from the animation on this slide. On the left is our old version, which you can see struggles at more extreme angles, versus our improved version on the right-hand side that can track with higher fidelity around the eye areas. Next, we are aiming to release two new pose estimation models in collaboration with research teams here at Google. The first, MoveNet, is an ultra-fast and accurate model that tracks 17 key points optimized for diverse poses and actions. The second, MediaPipe's Blaze Pose, gives us 33 key points and is also tailored for a diverse set of poses. This extra granularity, such as tracking both hands, could enable gesture-based applications that may be useful for certain projects. Now, both models have higher accuracy and performance over our original PoseNet implementation. So we recommend you try them both to see what works best for your intended use case. We also now have models for natural language processing, such as conversation intent detection, which is based on the distilled BERT architecture. It has state-of-the-art performance, yet it's small in size, making it suitable for browser and on-device scenarios too. With this model, you can identify a user's intent along with the related entities to fulfill such an intent. Even better, the model can interpret the utterance in the context of the evolving conversation over time. What that means is that in the example on the slide, we can see a conversation between two users that shows how prior sentences can lead to obtaining the correct restaurant name. In the first message, we can discover the intent is to find a restaurant. The second message asks a clarifying question, and the third message allows us to extract the restaurant name of interest, which is the entity, even though it is written on its own with no other content in that particular message. However, we can still associate it with the prior sentences to make the connection in a smart way. Next up, with our question and answer model, you can find the answer to a question in any piece of text you present to it. Here, you can see how we used it in a Chrome extension to use on any web page. Just ask the question and be scrolled to the answer that most likely fits. Examples like this are now possible with our BERT-based Q&A model in TensorFlow.js, as illustrated here with our collaboration with Creative Lab at Google. Even better, no server calls are required, so your privacy is completely preserved whilst browsing the pages you love. You can learn more about this exploration on the TensorFlow.js blog. Now, you may be wondering how hard it would be to make something like this. Well, using a pre-made TensorFlow.js model is really simple. In fact, the core code fits on a single slide, so let's walk through it. So first, we import the TensorFlow.js library and the pre-made model we want to use, in this case, the Q&A model. Next, we can define the text we wish to search. This could be some text on a website, but here, we're just going to use a simple string. We then also define the question the user wants to ask, which of course could come from some input box in a real application. Now we load the question and answer model itself, and this takes time to load as it's performing an asynchronous operation. So we use the then keyword to wait for it to be ready. Once the model is available, our function will be called, which is passed the loaded model as a parameter. Finally, we can then call the model.findAnswers function. We pass to this function the question we want to answer, along with the text we want to find the answer from. Again, this is an asynchronous operation, as it might take a few milliseconds to execute, but this promise will resolve to return an answers object, which we can then iterate through to find the most likely answer from the given passage of text. In this case, it would predict cats as the answer to the question which we proposed, which is correct given the text we had to search above. And that's all there is to it. Pretty simple, right? So give it a try. We've also got an update on performance. We're proud to announce we now support SIMD and multi-threading with WebAssembly for faster CPU execution, 
in addition to the WebGL that we already supported, which enables execution on the GPU. We can now get close or better than WebGL performance on the CPU for some models and environments through this. So here we see the timings for our face detector model, which on the 2019 MacBook Pro runs over two times faster than the WebGL implementation. And there are similar results for MobileNet. Of course, both are a significant boost over our plain JS executions on the CPU as seen on the right-hand side of the table. We can also see that smaller models tend to get most benefit when running on the CPU via WebAssembly versus the larger models, which tend to perform better on the GPU via WebGL. We're also pleased to announce support for TensorFlow Lite models in TensorFlow.js. You can now take your TF Lite models and run them directly on the web with familiar TensorFlow.js APIs. One way to use this is through the TF Lite task library, which provides easy interfaces to wrap your pre and post processing logic for your TF Lite model for common machine learning tasks. Now you can reuse your solutions made in TensorFlow Lite without having to rewrite for other formats. Even better, this allows us to reuse a lot of the optimizations that are built in to TF Lite models for even better mobile performance. Furthermore, we've created benchmarking tools to help users understand how a TensorFlow.js model performs on different devices. By choosing the custom model option, you can tell the tool where to load the model from, along with what backends and environments you want to benchmark with. We even support testing via browser stack to collect multiple results from different devices remotely. The TensorFlow.js team have used this tool to help productionize many of the model launches you heard about today, and this tooling is now available for everyone to use. So check out the TensorFlow.js GitHub repository for more information. So next up, let's talk about how you can get involved with our community to help us make the TensorFlow.js of tomorrow. First, we've now formed a special interest group to work on key areas of research in collaboration with all of you. Do come join us if you're passionate about a certain research area and want to help define the future of a TensorFlow.js project. Currently, we have areas such as benchmarking and performance, platform support, new models and application areas, tooling and infrastructure, model security, and server-side execution with TensorFlow.js Node, all of which are being actively worked on. So do get involved or suggest a new area if there's enough interest. Or maybe you want to help spread the love for TensorFlow.js if you're feeling inspired. Well, we've got a new working group that meets monthly to help scale the outreach, education, and internationalization of content around TensorFlow.js through many presentation opportunities, blogs, videos, and more. Get in touch with me directly if you'd like to champion TensorFlow.js in your country. If you're looking for inspiration, there are many ways to get it. Here we can see how people are using TensorFlow.js in many delightful ways with just a bit of creativity. Things like clothing size estimators on fashion websites, invisibility cloaks for creative applications, or how about webcam privacy for video calls, or lip syncing to your favorite songs. We can even teleport ourselves anywhere in the world using newer web technologies combined with TensorFlow.js. You can see projects like this at the TensorFlow.js show and tell live on the TensorFlow YouTube channel every quarter. So the question now is, what will you make? It really is up to you. But if you're looking for inspiration, check out the Made with TFJS hashtag on Twitter or LinkedIn to see even more amazing work as it's made. There are new demos coming out every single week from our growing community, so do check that out too. And with that, thank you for listening, and we hope to see you taking your first steps with machine learning in JavaScript. Machine learning is no longer just for academics and research engineers. With TensorFlow.js, we're really starting to see artists, creatives, and even musicians take their first steps too. And we're super keen to see how you will use TensorFlow.js in your next web project, no matter what your background might be. Feel free to connect with me on Twitter or LinkedIn if you've got further questions. And remember to use the made of TFJS hashtag if you make something that uses TensorFlow.js for a chance to be featured at our future events. Finally, we're launching a new forum where you can get advice or ask more technical questions. So do join us on discuss.tensorflow.org, especially if it might be a common question so everyone can benefit from the answer. Thank you for listening and see you soon.